Can you believe what you have been seeing on CNN today, ladies and gentlemen? Can you believe it? <laughs> Supposedly, a CNN reporter found Osama bin Laden, took a television camera crew with him, went into Osama bin Laden's hideout, interviewed him and his top leadership, his top lieutenants and colonels and generals in their hideout. This is a CNN reporter with a camera crew. And he came out and told everybody, within three weeks, Osama bin Laden is going to attack the United States and Israel. Now, don't you think that's kind of strange, folks? You see, because the largest intelligence apparatus in the world, with the biggest budget in the history of the world, has been looking for Osama bin Laden for years and years and years, and can't find him. The FBI also, under the leadership of Louis Free, has been looking for Osama bin Laden for years and years and years and years and years and many years and can't find him. Some doofus jerk-off reporter with a camera crew bosses right into his hideout and interviews him. Now, that tells us two things. Either everyone in the intelligence community and all of the intelligence agencies of the United States government are blithering idiots and incompetent fools, including the entire apparatus of the FBI and all of their personnel, or they're lying to us. They're not looking for him at all. And the second is the truth. You see, the CIA created Osama bin Laden. They recruited him. They trained him. They found his leadership. They brought them all together. They showed him them how to fight the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. And when that was over, they still continued to fund him and train him. And they're now using him to help bring about world government by making him the big boogeyman because they can't use Saddam Hussein anymore. When did you start hearing of Osama bin Laden? It was after Saddam Hussein and Iraq were supposedly neutralized in the Gulf War. Because they needed a new boogeyman. But they're not looking for Osama bin Laden because I'm telling you right now, if I were the head of the Central Intelligence Agency, within two weeks I would have him dead or in custody without fail. Without fail. If I had those assets and that money, he would be mine. I would own his terrorist ass within two weeks without fail. A reporter from CNN and his little camera crew got in to Osama bin Laden's secret hideout and conducted an interview. If you don't believe me, tune in to CNN. They're probably running it right now as I'm speaking. And if you believe it, you are one of the stupidest jerks that ever lived on the face of this earth. And whatever is going to happen that they're going to blame on Osama bin Laden, don't you even believe it. Another social illusion, social engineering project to change the minds and the attitudes and the beliefs of the people of the world, and especially the United States, to bring about one world socialist totalitarian government. When in hell are all you people going to wake up? Are you kidding me? I mean, is this some kind of incredible joke that people are so stupid they'll fall for this? Do you know how much money the CIA and the National Security Agency and the FBI has at its disposal each year? Do you know how many agents they have that they can devote to this? Do you realize the technology that they have to be able to eavesdrop on every single conversation in the world? You have no idea, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to tell you right now that whatever you perceive to be the state of the art of technology, any technology, 
in the civilian sector in secret, ladies and gentlemen. They are at least, very bare minimum, 50 to 100 years ahead beyond what you can even imagine. Micro-air vehicles, or MAVs, will play an important role in future warfare. The urban battlefield calls for tools to increase the warfighter's situational awareness and capacity to engage rapidly, precisely, and with minimal collateral damage. MAVs will be integrated into future Air Force layered sensing systems. These systems may be airdropped or hand launched depending on the mission requirements. The small size of MAVs allows them to be hidden in plain sight. Once in place, an MAV can enter a low-powered extended surveillance mode for missions lasting days or weeks. This may require the MAV to harvest energy from environmental sources, such as sunlight or wind, or from man-made sources, such as power lines and vibrating machinery. It will blend in with its surroundings and operate undetected. MAVs will use microsensors and microprocessor technology to navigate and track targets through complicated terrain such as urban areas. An MAV operating in urban terrain will have more agility challenges than larger UAVs. Obstructions can cause wind gusts even on a calm day. One way to overcome this is to learn from examples in nature and use flapping wings to fly. Sensing an oncoming gust, feedback control directs the wings to flap asymmetrically, compensating for the wind. Small size and agile flight will enable MAVs to covertly enter locations inaccessible by traditional means of aerial surveillance. MAVs will use new forms of navigation, such as a vision-based technique called optic flow. This system remains robust when traditional methods, such as GPS, are unavailable. Multiple MAVs, each equipped with small sensors, will work together to survey a large area. Information from these sensors will be combined, providing the swarm of MAVs with a big picture point of view. Data will be communicated amongst the MAVs to enable real-time, reliable decision making and to provide an overall surveillance picture for other platforms or operators. Each individual MAV may perform a very distinct mission from its fellow swarm members. While some MAVs may be used purely for visual reconnaissance, others may be used for targeting or tagging of sensitive locations. Individual MAVs may perform direct attack missions and can be equipped with incapacitating chemicals, combustible payloads, or even explosives for precision targeting capability. MAVs may carry sensors to detect chemical, biological, or radiation threats and relay this information to human operators or to other unmanned platforms. Like their biological inspiration, MAVs are not limited to flight. The agile hovering, perching, and crawling MAV will fulfill the mission popularly termed dull, dirty, and dangerous like no current system can. MAVs will become a vital element in the ever-changing warfighting environment and will help ensure success on the battlefield of the future. Unobtrusive, pervasive, lethal, micro-air vehicles enhancing the capabilities of the future warfighter. Well, I spoke with Anna McGowan at the NASA Langley Research Center, who's working to incorporate something called morphing technology into aircraft. We're working on making airplanes you know, as versatile as a bird is. So we're taking some lessons from nature. We're also looking at flapping wing airplanes, believe it or not. So Anna, tell me how you design a flapping wing without using an engine. 
We actually use what are called smart or active materials instead of using an engine. And why is it referred to as smart material? Well, smart materials actually move on command. These are materials that when you apply a stimulus, like electricity or heat, or in some case magnetism, they actually move.